We are back to Alienware. <laughs> Let's get it. Okay, so if you've been a part of the channel uh, since the beginning, I got my first break on my YouTube channel dealing with Alienware, computers, stuff like that. And I know a lot of people don't like pre-bills and all this stuff, but you know, back then, you know, my first gaming PC was an Alienware Aurora R7. And uh, man, we came a long way. You know, we got into custom builds, building our own PCs and all that good stuff. And now we're here. What we have here is the Alienware AW3423DW. And yes, this is the one that comes with G-Sync Ultimate. And I know there's been a lot of stuff over the net about, oh, how the, you know, the actual DWF model is better than this model and all that different type of stuff. Forget all that. Um, I've been looking for a monitor to complement um, both of my PCs. So I got two PCs. Um, one, the one that you see all the time is my gaming PC that has a 7800X3D in it, um, along with the, and I've been swapping, you know, back and forth between the 7900XTX and the 4090. I've enjoyed my LG CX so much uh, with using it whenever I can as a 4K gaming monitor, along with entertainment and stuff like that. But I needed a, a real gaming monitor. Uh, but I also wanted it to be OLED. And the reason is because you're going to see a little bit later on in the video. Whew, we're talking about HDR, infinite contrast, deep blacks, uh, everything. From what I've been able to see, the actual panel, uh, you know, this uh, particular monitor is probably a little bit over a year old. But this is like one of the first gaming OLED monitors, this ultra wide, 34 inches. It has everything. We're talking about G Sync Ultimate. It's 34 inches. The actual resolution on here is 3440 by 1440. So basically, you know, it's like, you know, from 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 the height wise, is you know, the same as a 1440p monitor, uh, but it's wider. Right, so higher resolution. Um, so you definitely need, you know, a, a graphics card that's capable of being able to run this. Um, it, it gets up to a thousand nits on the brightness. It covers the DCI-P3 um, at 99.3%. It has a 0.1% greater grade response time. And yeah, this particular panel um, actually is the Quantum Dot um, OLED panel, uh, which is a newer OLED technology that Samsung created. Uh, there are two models when it comes to this. Uh, we have the uh, the DW model and then the DWF. The DWF is a little bit newer. Um, that comes with FreeSync Pro. So basically, if you have an AMD graphics card, the actual FreeSync model uh, may work a little bit better for you. Uh, but here's one thing I do know. On a DWF model, it allows you to be able to upgrade the actual firmware. Uh, which that particular model and this model um, needed some firmware updates, you know, a couple of changes. We'll talk a little um, a little bit more about that later on. Um, but the reason why I picked up this particular model is one, because I wanted the GC Ultimate. Um, this particular model gets up to 175 hertz, uh, you know, as far as the refresh rate. The DWF model does 165. Uh, but another thing when it comes to the actual 10-bit panel, um, you can actually use up to 144 hertz at 10 bit. I've also heard that you could actually be able to do um, like a custom um, resolution setting in order to be able to um, to use, but I didn't want to get into all that. Um, but the biggest thing about um, the reason why I picked this up from Micro Center um, is because on the box, it told me what the manufacturer date was <laughs> and it said August of 2023. So that was just a couple of months ago um, in which that means that this should have the latest firmware, which I shouldn't have to worry about any more firmware updates um, that's, that should be needed, you know, saying for this particular model. So hopefully, you know, we should be good down the road, later on down the line. But because this has been out over a year now, um, I think a lot of the actual firmware updates and stuff like that is needed is probably pretty much done. So that's a good thing. All right. So let's get into it. OK, we got the knife out. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. See what we Yes, sir, Ski. Tells you everything that's in here. This also comes with the, and I, you know, I've been seeing this a lot. It also is factory calibrated. So it tells you, it checks off everything. Pre-tune for sRGB, um, DCI-P3 modes, um, everything. Great scale, gamma, color uniformity. So yeah. Um, so cables, HDMI cables. So as far as like ports on here, this comes with HDMI 2.0. 
I know a lot of people are like, it doesn't come with 2.1. Uh, no, it doesn't. The actual G-Sync module in here doesn't support HDMI 2.1. Uh, so we have a USB cable, display port to a mini HDMI, mini display port. Um, and then we actually have a display port cable that comes in the box, which is pretty cool. Oh, we got a cloth. We got a wiping cloth, okay. This is the power cable. And uh, what's cool about this is that we don't have to deal with the actual power brick. And that's because um, all of the actual power is built into the monitor, which is great. So this right here is probably the actual VESA mount adapter. Yep, 100 by 100. Um, you would need this if you want to put this on monitor arms. And we have the stand. It has a thumb screw right here. And that's basically it. Like once you connect everything together, that's all you need. You don't need any tools. And then, whew, this is pretty heavy. This is the actual arm that the actual monitor sits on. So this clips in into the back of the actual monitor. And then we actually have the back panel um, that will actually cover up the wires for your power cable, HDMI cable, display port cable. So obviously be using that as well. We got the monitor itself. So, woo -woo. Of course, this is where the actual stand goes. And if you was to put this on a monitor arm, um, the adapter would go here and you attach it. Man, this looks so, you know, I initially thought this was like a white, but this is more of a, a kind of like a light gray silver. We got the 34 inside and I think this lights up along with the Alienware head that's right here. So this actually is supposed to clip in just like that. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just connect these two together. So, there we go. Okay. All right. Now we can screw it in. Boom. And so that's it. So really right here, it just clips in. And boom. That's it. That's all you got to do. And this thing is heavy. So I'm going to move this box out of the way and let's put it on the table. Okay. So here's the back of the monitor and this thing is massive. Um, and I'm going to absolutely love it, especially for video editing, content creation, uh, obviously gaming, um, content watching. Um, but yeah, so we got a 34 here. I think I talked about it already. We got the alien head and um, I still got the actual, um, this thing is actually sturdy. Um, it's like real sturdy. Um, it's, it's not a whole lot of wobble, you know, and stuff like that. Like if I shake the table, you know, it wobbles just a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, this thing is heavy, you know, um, as well. So definitely, um, it's made really good, you know, and I know there's been certain stuff with Alienware, with how they do their pre-builds, <laughs> but we're not going to get into that. Um, it's all about the display right here. Um, so let's take a look at some of the ports. So again, we actually have display port. Uh, two HDMI 2.0 ports, USB ports um, that's up in here. And I think those are like five gigabyte per second ports. So that is pretty cool uh, for being able to plug in different things. Then over here on this side, uh, uh, we actually just have the power cable. I don't think we have anything else. Let's turn it around. Oh, and then, you know, of course, you know, we have uh, um, the paneling that's going to go on the back here uh, to be able to hide the cabling. And uh, yeah. This thing looks pretty dope. And so um, I do know um, this comes with uh, fans uh, for the actual G-Seat module and also uh, for being able to cool this thing down because, uh, you know, I heard OLED, you know, my TV, yeah, power, uh, heat, and all that different type of stuff, definitely. <laughs> um, but this thing is beautiful. I love the two-tone um, that's on the back here. And uh, yeah, talk about aesthetics. Oh, and also this comes with lighting, um, RGB lighting that goes around the actual back. Um, you know, I heard it's kind of subtle. Uh, it's not too bright, which is good. Um, but also at the same time, you know, if you had, you know, mine's, this is up against the window. So um, you, I'm never going to see the back of this. So I would just see the actual highlights that comes from the actual RGB lighting that, that goes on in the back. Okay, so what's great about that, I still had a phone panel on, but what's great about this is that the actual stand, it doesn't come out that far. So if we look at the side that's like this, the actual stand is almost kind of flush, uh, with it, which is great because I actually have a mouse pad um, that's going to go. I have a pretty big mouse pad, and I was hoping that wasn't going to get in the way, you know, saying for being able to use mouse and keyboard. But um, this is this is a big monitor, but it's not too big. And of course, I have an oversized desk, so I'm I'm thinking I probably maybe about a little bit over two feet, definitely over two feet, 
you know, from death wise, uh, from the back of the desk to the front. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is, this is amazing. So let's take off this actual panel and, you know, they using this special type of tape. So I thought I was going to be able to take this, but I don't know. Okay. Let's do the styrofoam peel. Yeah. Bet you never heard that before. Styrofoam peel. <laughs> All right. So we got something at the bottom. Ooh, look at that. So, um, some people don't like the gloss. I love it because, you know, on my TV, on the LG C8, it also has the gloss. But I like the gloss. And the reason is because the actual HDR, the picture is going to come out. Um, I do, uh, there was a lot of talk about uh, something about the actual film that's on the panel. So even like in a very bright room, which I got the lights on and stuff right now, um, the panel is not completely black. You can kind of see almost kind of like a shade of gray. But I usually gain um, in, while the room is dark. Um, you see, I got the blackout curtains. And so, yeah, um, this is not going to be an issue. So let's go ahead and get the actual gaming PC uh, cranked up. And let's take a look. All right. And here you can see the alien head lights up. And then we have the suitable RGB uh, ring that's on the back. The 34 is not lit up. So I don't think that that lights up, but we'll see. Okay. So first thing i want to say is good god almighty the colors that's on this month is something special um all right uh let's get into the issue so there's a joystick that's down at the bottom of the monitor and you click that um you got a couple of things that pop up on the screen and uh hopefully you can see that uh, i believe you can so up here at the top the it gives you like the presets the smart hdr is off it says g-sync dark stabilizer and down here at the bottom which is what we're going to focus on so down here at the bottom which is what we're going to focus on um you'll see you could go from left to right presets volume um it does have built-in speakers but we're not going to use those but um if we click up it gives you the monitor um and you have a bunch of different settings so let's start from the top so you have uh game and then if you go over here to presets this is where you can actually be able to change um you have a number of different presets as far as like um the colors and um some of the features and so you have standard uh creator um fps uh moba uh, rts rpg sports game one game two uh game three warm cool and custom so right now um, the HDR with inside Windows 11 is not turned on. Uh, so what I'm using is Creator. And up under Creator, you have Color Space and then you have Gamma. So upon the Color Space, I'm actually using the DCI-P3. Um, you also have the option of sRGB. And then for Gamma, um, I'm using 2.6. Um, you... I have this suited for the way that I like to see um, the extra screen. I think the way that I have it set up um, suits me best. Um, and then you have, oh, I just changed the gamma. <laughs> um, I like 2.6. I think um, a lot of times they use that uh, for like theater, uh, you know, like movies as far as like the, the gamma uh, where they're doing a the color uh, uh, correction and exporting and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, um, if we go back here, to game enhance mode you also have different options for like a timer frame rate um, display alignment um dark stabilizer you can actually be able to control that i have it on zero um and then we have hdr mode so we have hdr 400 true black and then we have hdr peak 1000 and so upon the hdr true black a lot of people actually like um the actual color and the way that it looks um, and the HDR will get up to 400 nits. Um, and then you have, and I'm using HDR peak 1000. And you have HDR peak 1000, um, the actual HDR gets up to 1000 nits. Uh, you know, I think within like a 10% window or something like that. Um, so I use HDR 1000. Now, this only pops on when Windows 11 switches, when you switch on HDR in the options for Windows 11. So when HDR is off, you know, you have, you know, 
what we have here. Uh, the colors are like super rich um, and, uh, you know, some of the tones and stuff like that are a little bit darker. Um, if you go over here to brightness and contrast, um, I actually have my brightness on 80% in the contrast on 66. Um, this is just after playing around with some of the settings. This is what I like the most when I'm not in HDR. Um, and like I was saying, it's like if I turn on, like, so if we go here, I have my 4090 um, in my system right now. Um, but if we go to, so if we go over here to display settings, um, currently right now, I actually have, uh, you see where it says um, use HDR. So if I click this, which I'm going to do, of course the screen turns completely black. Um, now, and I did a color, a HDR color calibration, which you could do, you could download this from the Microsoft Store. I think it's uh, HDR, Windows HDR calibration app. So I downloaded this and it's pretty cool, uh, which allows you to be able to get better colors while using HDR. You can kind of fine tune it. So I went through that. And as you can see, you can see the dates. It gives you dates. I did it like three times. Uh, this is the one that I like the most. So it was from November the 5th, uh, whatever the case may be. But as you can see, the colors of the lion on my wallpaper are a little bit different, right? Um, so what I found out was that uh, HDR and it looked even more washed out before I did the color calibration. So Windows 11 doesn't do HDR all that well, you know, from a desktop standpoint. So what you, you know, and you really don't see the full effect until you actually go into a, a game where you're watching HDR uh, content where you see the actual big difference. So when I'm not uh, playing a game with HDR or watching content in HDR, I actually have this turned off. And when you do this, you'll see the actual lion you see the, the actual colors <laughs> so um you know from the cutie oled panel um i can still be able to take advantage of the actual colors and the brightness and stuff like that uh when i'm not using hdr and it's phenomenal um it, it looks great uh, so no matter what type of content i'm watching not a different type of stuff even um the actual um the dark colored theme is darker you know with HDR being turned off with inside Windows 11. It's weird, I know, but when, um, actually, let me turn this back on because when you actually have HDR on, um, I'm gonna show you something. So when HDR is on, and as you can see, it's more gray than it is dark, um, but if we go back in here to the settings, um, if we go down here to brightness and contrast, you can't control the brightness anymore. And that's just, that's because we're, the HDR takes over for uh, the actual brightness. So the only thing that you control is the contrast, which I leave at 66%. So all this stuff stays the same. Um, and actually, when we go back over here to creator profile, you can no longer change anything inside the creator profile. So that's another thing. So when you have HDR, when HDR is triggered, um, even up here at the top, it says Smart HDR. It says that it's on. When it's triggered, you can't change some of the settings inside Creator. So, um, you know, depending on what you're doing, um, I don't leave HDR on all the time up on the Windows desktop. Um, I only turn it on when I'm about to watch some HDR content. All right. So let me turn it off, and uh, we're going to go back into the settings. Okay. So back up under the settings. So we looked at brightness contrast. You could control that. So now when I go back, if I go back into creator, you know, you could go back into the color space and the gamma. But when HDR is turned on with inside Windows 11, you cannot go back in and change those things. Um, so let me go back out. Uh, yeah, input source. So we had DisplayPort, HDMI 1, HDMI 2. Um, alien effects lighting so you can actually change the lighting that we took a look um on the back of the monitor um so you could change the color and all that different type of stuff brightness um audio uh, again it has built-in speakers but we don't use those um menu um transparency timers and stuff like that personalized you can come in here you could do short uh, shortcut keys uh, for different items and then other so up on the other um Display info, um, you can actually see the model, um, the source, the current, 
um, resolution and also refresh rate. And right now I actually had a refresh rate on 120 Hertz. And the only reason why I did that is because while shooting this video, I noticed there's, it was flickering. Um, and I think, you know, it has to deal with the refresh rate and stuff like that while recording. Um, so to limit that, so you, you know, it didn't bother you while watching this, I put on 120 Hertz, but when I show you some gameplay, um, I'll put it back at the max and we'll talk about that. Um, a little bit further. Um, let's see, firmware. So this has the MOB205, or that could be M0B. I don't know, but this is the latest firmware. Um, this the manufacturer date on this monitor was August. I talked about that, that at the beginning of the video. Um, the ambient light sensor I have turned off, eco mode is off. I want the highest brightness possible. I don't need anything that's you know trying to uh limit the actual brightness of the monitor. Um, OLED panel maintenance. Um, I want to show you this. So you have a pixel refresh, panel refresh, and then auto warning message. And so I keep that on auto. The pixel refresh looks like this. And so it says OLED pixel refresh. And so what it does um, kind of shifts everything around as far as like the panel every four hours. So whenever you have four hours of use, um, sometimes, you know, if you've been using your monitor all day, this would pop up. Um, and, you know, it gets a little bit annoying, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, because, uh, you know, sometimes if I'm in a long gaming session or I've been using my monitor all day, uh, I don't want to see that. Right. Um, but it just pops up in just like in the middle of you just doing stuff. But anyway, but um, it this helps with the actual burning. So this is what this for, you know, the fight against burning. Uh, this monitor comes with a three year warranty uh, from Alienware, which is amazing. Uh, well, you know, and you know, if you occur any type of burning, they'll, um, it's like an advanced service for replacing, um, the actual panel. Um, so it's amazing. So yeah, the warranty, this is one of the only monitors that I've seen that comes with the actual three-year warranty that covers burning. And so it, I feel really good about, you know, I've, I haven't had any issues with my, uh, my LG TV, um, and I've had that for years now. I think going on maybe it's a little bit over two years. No issues with burning. I take a lot of precautions. I don't have any icons on my screen or anything like that. Um, but if I did run into any issues, I call up in where get my panel replaced, and then we'd be good to go. Um, so you can also this will also run during standby. Uh, so when you're not using it, um, it'll also run a pixel refresh. Um, we have another no do it do it standby. So there's another um, option over here for panel refresh. Now, this is the one, I think it runs after using a monitor for like 1500 hours. Um, you don't want to just run this. Um, I think it, you know, uh, causes issues um, if you try to run this too many times. So the panel refresh, again, I think it runs after 1500 hours and then auto warning message, you know, you could control whether or not you want this on or off. On is actually good, I leave it on. Um, and then you have a factory reset. Um, so going back, so those, you know, it's really it. It's not much else uh, with inside here. Um, you could kind of tailor this to how you like it, you know, and the things that you want. Um, but again, for me, I'm using creative mode. Uh, game enhanced mode is off. Dark stabilizer on zero. HDR peak 1000. Yeah, that's how I have my monitor set up. Now, now that we got that out of the way, let me show you the NVIDIA control panel because I want to talk a little bit more about, um, so this monitor gets up to 175 Hertz. So right now, um, you can get 10 bit. Um, this is a 10 bit panel. Um, you can actually use 10 bit all the way up to 144 Hertz. Once you go to 175 Hertz, it switches over to eight bit, uh, with dithering. Now, the thing about that, I have not seen a difference between, um, you know, as far as like the, you know, banding or anything like that, you know, the difference between 8-bit, 10-bit, um, I haven't seen it. You know, I've been playing around with this for a little bit over a week now, and, and you know, I don't see it. So usually I actually leave this on 175 hertz, and like I said, the only reason why I have it at 120 hertz is I can stop the flickering from recording on the video. Um, but I am actually going to go ahead and switch this back over to 175 hertz, and once I do that, it's going to change to 8-bit. But again, this wide panel um, is absolutely amazing. And now 
what I want to do is actually get into some gameplay and show you exactly what this looks like the best way I can over YouTube. <laughs> so, of course, we're, record we're recording in 4K. Um, and so, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, first game we have up is God of War. And let me tell you, <laughs> this one is a doozy. Let's go. Now, let me tell you, you actually get, you see so much more on the ultra wide and the game looks amazing. Still want me to tie it to the boat? You see the darks, you see the cutie OLED, OLED, the blacks are black. It's amazing. And if you see any flickering, uh, that's just from recording that um, the actual refresh rate of the monitor is at 175 hertz and we record. Uh, you know, depending on the situation, depending on what's going on, you may start seeing some flickering while you're trying to record the screen. She's ready. And this just makes me wonder, I was playing around with the screen calibration and I'm wondering did I have my contrast up too high? Let's see. Oh, what's default? So default is 50. Brightness. I think I had it at 75. Let's try 70 and see what the difference is. Okay. Yeah, that looks better.
So let me tell you, if you haven't played God of War, especially on the OLED, QD OLED, this game is freaking amazing. <laughs> Let's move on to the next game. Hans only bought us 15 minutes. We need to hit Kasim hard and fast. Let's go. Let's help him bring in the new year. Why am I missing? Next game that we have up is a favorite of mine. This is Forza Horizon 5 and whew, yeah, let's take a look.
And one thing I can tell you about this game, it's absolutely beautiful. Just look at the lights. And you're playing a racing game on a on an ultra wide. Oh, you're talking about immersion, it's crazy. Okay, so that is Forza Horizon 5. Uh, let's check out another game. Okay, the next game that we have up is Ratchet and Clank. And man, everything about this game screams detail, the colors, the HDR, everything. Let's take a look. this place where are you clank maybe someone around here is seen it. Sounds like a club, all right. 
Okay, um, and the last game that we have up is Doom Eternal. And man, this is such a fun game to play. I never knew how fun it would be to play on an ultra wide, on an OLED panel. Man, it's amazing. All right, let's get into it. We got a mouse and keyboard play, baby. Let's go. Just go ahead and just buy it. Just buy it. You know, Black Friday is coming up. I don't know what type of deals Amazon is going to be doing. Uh, but if you do have a micro center in your area, I was able to pick this up for seven, no, eight ninety nine. dollars um, And, you know, if you choose, like I said, you know, this is the uh, AW3423DW model. Um, there's another model uh, very similar to this, uh, you know. Again, I haven't reviewed it, but it's a you know a free sync mo uh, model that ends in DWF um, that may be seven ninety nine, um, but this one is eight ninety nine. I can only speak for this one, um, and I absolutely love it. Um, it's you know you're seeing the gameplay, you're seeing what it could be able to look like. Um, of course, you won't know until you actually get one in front of your face and you see how bright the actual screen gets uh, when it comes to the HDR. Um, but man, when I tell you the actual the response time with using this monitor, gaming, it's it's a that's it. It's it's like the ultimate gaming monitor. It gets up to 175 hertz, uh, content creation, video editing, all the above. It does it. I've done a lot of searching online, and I could not find another comparable monitor uh, that's ultra wide, that's OLED, and does everything that it does. For the price, uh, the only other monitor that I would consider, um, it, it's not even out yet, and it would be the 32-inch uh, Alienware OLED 240 hertz 4K. So that's the only one, <laughs> the only that. But that monitor is going to be considerably more expensive, um, you know, when it comes out. And and of course, you know, you probably don't want to get the first batch of those, uh, you know, just depending on you know what's going on and stuff like that. But this is it. I spent a lot of time doing some research um, on this monitor. And I pulled the trigger, and it's one of the best purchases I made of 2023. So, you know, if you want a great gaming experience, a great overall monitor experience, or something uh, that you're going to be using for years to come, make sure that you hit the link down in the description below. Hit the links. It's going to help out the channel, but it's also going to be able to help you uh, just make a purchasing decision. So if you're in the market for a monitor, if you could cough up to 8 dollars this is a great purchase. Uh, I will tell you the 3440 by 1440p resolution, you know, it is a little bit hard to run. It's, it's a, you know, it's more considerably harder to run than regular 1440p. So you need a good graphics card. And also, you know, to hit the 175 hertz, you need also a good CPU. Uh, so make sure that you keep those things in mind. Um, I got a new PCB that's coming up with the 14900K uh, that's going to be coming up right after this video. Uh, so make sure that you look forward to that. I'm super excited about that one. Uh, so, yeah. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, if you want to see more content like this, make sure that you hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.